Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to our fourth podcast, Athena Protection Services. Dan, uh, how you doing today? I'm doing good. Good, doing good. good. Okay, we got a guest in the house today. You want to introduce your guest? Yeah, we got uh, Marlon Terry with us today. He's going to be uh, helping us talk about some current events today. Awesome. Well, how you doing today, Marlon? Hey, it's another day. Just coming home from a funeral, but hey, we dealing with it. So, oh, sorry to hear about that. Mm-hmm. Well, that kind of condolences to you. We'll say Thank when you. what Thank we're you. talking about today with current events in the city. Uh, but before we get started, then uh, tell us who we are, or tell everyone who we are. I should say. All right, we are Athena Protection Service. We are a security company. Um, we provide a variety of security services, including armed and unarmed guard service, um, consulting. We do with private investigations, things of that nature. Um, if you want to get in contact with us, you can reach us at 800-951-4866. That's 1-800-951-4866. Or you can reach us on any social media or our website at athenaprotections.com. And make sure you hit those like buttons, okay, and subscribe on YouTube. So today you said you want to talk about some current events. Wow, if anyone's been watching the news lately, there's a lot going on uh, across the nation, but most definitely here uh, in the metro Detroit area. So uh, let's get started. Absolutely. So the first thing I want to talk about is the recent police shooting of uh, police officer Rasheen McLean, um, which he would uh, end the watch was November 20 of 2019. Uh, watching the news, Chief Craig described it as a, a home invasion with occupants inside the home. I think it turned out that it was the boyfriend coming into the home, um, causing some trouble. Uh, officers go in to clear the home, encounter the gunman in the basement, shots fired, and McLean ended up getting struck in the neck. Um, what I want to do is reach, uh, just say to the family, the friends, officers, DPD family, my <coughs> sincerest condolences. Uh, what I want to talk about this particular situation is first moving forward, you know, given the circumstances of this incident and threat of copycat offenders. And this is a question for you, Marlon. Um, do you think it should be a policy for the Detroit police department to have officers call SRT when these situations have a gunman in the home and they don't know where this particular gunman is when they know somebody's in there with a high power weapon? We'll and before, I'm uh, sorry to interrupt, before you uh, answer that question, Marlon, let's uh, talk a little bit briefly about your background so uh, listeners understand why right. you're able to give us the input that you were able to give us today. Okay. Well, I'm a returning uh, visitor to the show. Thank you. Uh, I'm a uh, 21-year veteran with the Detroit Police Department, <clears throat> worked in various departments and units within the department, uh, worked a year and a half with the Wayne County Sheriff's Office. Uh, now I'm just enjoying retirement. So Absolutely. Appreciate that. As you were saying, oh, what I was saying. Well, that's already a policy. Uh, mm-hmm. If I was I'm not mistaken on this particular incident, um, I guess the people that lived there were already out, and the home was locked. So, okay. uh, <clears throat> at that point, maybe I myself would have might have called for a supervisor. I believe supervisors were called uh, because uh, in situations like that, you know, they have to, they should come out and they deem it a barricaded gun in the situation, and okay. SRT is uh, notified. Mm-hmm. So that's already policy, but, you know, I don't know what were the actual particulars of this situation that made the officers go inside. Okay. Okay. So knowing that this is a traumatic event, um, we kind of went over this last night. I wish this conversation was held here instead of, you know, amongst uh, text messages and things like that, that there was a, there's always some kind of, suffering on a department from different officers when things like this happen. It affect everybody. Oh, absolutely. But, I'm sure. Um, we had a conversation last night about um, how it just, some officers blew it off and it didn't impact them in any kind of way and they becoming like desensitized to the situation. Why do you think that is? Uh, that I, I don't know. You know, I wish I could call that one. I'm not sure why that situation is starting to surface. Well, but, you know, we're all desensitized. You, me, we, mm-hmm. we've been to those things. I remember my dad getting, ye- you know, yelling at me because he's seen me on TV, you know, at these particular scenes. Oh, yeah, you guys are out there laughing. And j-. Okay, and like I had to explain to him, I'm like, nobody's laughing. 
about the situation that they're out there dealing with. I'm like, you're out there, you're you run into people that you haven't seen in a while, so y'all talking, catching up. Everybody's doing the job, but everybody's waiting for everybody else to do what they're doing. So I'm like, mm-hmm. it's just a whole lot of hurry up and wait. And depending on how much time you had on the job, you just you, you're right. You are desensitized. You've seen umpteen dead bodies, mutilated. This at, at some point, mm-hmm. it's just it's just part of the job, you know. So that's what that is, you know. But some of these, if you're referring to some of these younger kids. I, I said it the last time. These millennials, these new kids, they're a whole new, different kind of breed. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I hate to, you know, actually at the funeral, I was at the minister. He said it best. Uh, they're not gonna listen to you. They're not gonna listen to you, you, me, or anybody in here. They're only gonna listen to somebody from their age group, you know. Mm-hmm. And until one of them steps up and says, we got to start making some changes, it's always going to be like that. You and I, we can sit and talk about this all we want. We can talk to them till we blue in the face. It's just not going to phase them, you know. Mm-hmm. They're just a whole different kind of breed. Right. I know for me, actually, when I <coughs> heard about it, and again, uh, condolences to the family and to the whole DPD as well as all of the surrounding Metro uh, officers, for me it was uh, like, man, yet again, you know, the the – the amount of crime towards officers, uh, these school shootings. It's like we're hearing about so many of them so often, too. I think we are almost getting desensitized to it to a degree because it's happening so frequently. Yeah, I, I just think it's hard to take. It's, it's just hard to take. And then, um, you know, I saw that the guy had, you know, a little bit of a criminal history in it. Um, did you see the update that the chief put out about his, yeah. him doing an internal investigation on that? Yeah, I'm going to just say this. You know, I admire Chief Craig. Um, he's done some things for the department that I like, and then there are some things that he's done that I dislike. And when I was there, I was very vocal and pointed these things mm-hmm. out to him. Uh, that internal audit, you know, I'm, I'm like, okay, you're going to do what? My thing is this. Okay, Officer McLean is is gone. His partner is in the hospital recuperating, and he pretty much is like, okay, well, this guy has a lengthy history. Uh, He's wanted in connection with some other things. You know, my thing is this, okay, maybe some of those off, maybe somebody did drop the ball somewhere, but Mm -hmm. even if they hadn't, looking at this man's uh, background, I'm like, what would have changed other than the fact that what happened earlier this week would have happened earlier? And it would have mm-hmm. just happened to a different batch of officers because I'm like the man's character was not going to change. Right. You see what he's already. You see what he's capable of. You see what mm-hmm. he's done. I'm like, who's to say he wouldn't have did that then? It would have, like I said, it, it could have went another way. You know, maybe SRT or something could have caught him somewhere else, or mm-hmm. some other officer. Could've. Then <clears throat> they'd either cut, got him in custody or shot him. Then people have been in up. Oh, the police done shot another black man. Or mm-hmm. then, like I said, or like I said, the situation could have been. They were trying to catch him somewhere else, and he did the exact same thing that he did right. earlier. So I'm like, you know, you're coming on the news tomorrow. Inter- save it. Okay, right. the officer's yeah. already gone. The, you'll think you got the man now, so make sure he don't get out of make sure he don't get out of jail now. Stick mm-hmm. him under the jail now. Right. And, you know, woulda, coulda, all that other stuff. Yeah, it's know. almost like you, uh, you know, Monday morning yeah. quarterback. Yeah. It's too late. Bit. It's too late. It's too yeah. late. You got him now. Mm-hmm. Make sure he stay there. All right, let's switch gears a little bit. And I don't want to leave this particular incident because there's something that I think every citizen can learn from this about abusive boyfriends and personal protection orders and things like that. You know, from what I understand, she's had a history of issues with this guy. Um, What is your recommendation on women protecting themselves from people that show this level of violence. You know, it's like this. If the man done put his hands on you once, who mm-hmm. say he's not going to do it again? It's incumbent on you. I totally agree. You know, to do I want to be in this situation or do I want to move on? Mm-hmm. And for whatever reason, I guess she chose to stick with him or what have you. Then I hate to say it, you know, I'm from a family where they don't care how old you are. If you messing up, they're going to tell you. But mm-hmm. you get a lot of people well, they grown, so I'm not going to mm. get involved. That's still your family. So mm. I'm pretty sure her family knew what was going on. Somebody should have said, you need to cut him loose. Or somebody, or like I said, you already know me and how I, you know, right, I do right. my daughter. I'm like, her daddy should have gotten his face and been like, if you're going to keep, or well, he should have did something. Like, if mm-hmm. you put your hands on my daughter again, I'm going to blow your goddamn brains out. Exactly. Right. You know, my, Most like definitely I said, don't have like I, said I, I, you know, I like my daughter's boyfriend, but he has a fear of me. And he should. 
<laughs> and okay, that's just the way it is. All right, I, I, I'm not gonna argue with you there. If he's scared, he's scared. Oh, he's a nice um, guy, but yeah. like I, I've already told, uh, I've already told him. But would you recommend your daughter arming herself in a, in a situation uh, like this? Yeah, well, you see that that you know they handle CPLs out now like candy, and it's mm-hmm. just I always ask people, I'm like. They didn't do this years ago. I'm like, now right. all of a sudden, I'm like, if you don't put yourself in that situation, you don't need that kind of stuff. But uh, but then on the other hand, my daughter shoots better than me now. So, <laughs> you know, okay. so mm-hmm. you know, she has access to weapons. So I'm right. like, again, her boyfriend could be stupid if he want to. He he not going to make it out of that situation. Yeah, so. I, I guess it's... Uh, to and then sum his it up is, that's hypothetical. Yeah, hypothetical. Yeah, yeah, I don't think he's going to do anything, but, you know. But, it's, yeah. it's better to have it and not need it, right? More or less, yeah. Yeah. I'll be safe to say I think what happens in situations sometime, and for our listeners, please, uh, you know, give us your responses to this uh, if you're listening now or later on. But I think what happens sometime in those uh, domestic violence situations, mm-hmm. especially these days with social media, and I'm not going to go down that whole road, but I think what happens is um, – People get into relationships. Mm -hmm. They're excited about the relationship. You hear about it on their social media. You know, he did this for me today, (coughs) this, that, and other. And, you know, know, we know how things are when they're new and exciting. Mm -hmm. And everyone's quick to go post it. And then when things kind of start going going bad and you start to really get to know that person, I think sometimes it's almost like, well, now I'm embarrassed because I put this person on this pedestal because mm-hmm. those first 30 days were just the best day, days of my life. And now you got to say, oh, wow, I found out this person is not who they were. And I've been through this more than once because mm-hmm. typically people that make those type of decisions uh, have made them before, unfortunately. And you right. end up probably being embarrassed. And, and we got to probably really get the message out to people. Look, if you're someplace we're dealing with somebody who you are mm-hmm. uncomfortable with and their character is in question. Don't worry about likes on social media or what somebody's going to put in the comments. Right. Uh, you need to talk to somebody and get away from that person because we've seen time and time again. Uh, exactly. Tiger don't change his stripes. Right. right. If you're in an abusive relationship, there are plenty of outreach <laughs> programs that you can call or, like I said, I'm pretty sure a good a uh, good portion of these people have family that are more than willing to mm-hmm. come get them or interject themselves in these situations. You, you, a lot of people, you got to realize you're not alone. You right. may think you I are, think but no, honestly, point. you are not mm-hmm. alone. You know, there are people that don't know you that's willing to help you. And then, like I said, there are people that do know you that are more than willing to help. So it's like just open your mouth right. and just ask for that help. Right. So let me swing over to this other uh, situation that happened recently. I don't know if you even heard about this Uh I think it was in Warren. This guy, Keith Dixon, loading a gun. His girlfriend's videoing him, and he's loading a forty five, telling her what those bullets going to do to her. And then shortly after the video goes off, should they end up finding out he shot her, killed her, and drove off with her body in the car, put her body in the passenger seat of the car, and then called his mama, told his mama to hide the gun. His mother is under arrest for accessory after the fact. And he's... uh arrested with no bond right now. I see. I can't really get into that because uh, them people, some of the people involved, I actually work with, so I, I, ain't nothing I can... Uh, <laughs> so I'll tell you, I can't a, say as, a, as a civilian, <laughs> <laughs> uh, some of the things I heard in regards to that story, uh, and again, just a uh, news media, I'm sure you guys uh, have a little more, but uh, not heard, I saw the young lady's father, which funny, you talked about it, Merlin, her mm-hmm. father is outright first thing out of his mouth is i didn't care for this individual Mm -hmm. and she's grown but she's 20 years old if i'm not mistaken right um had only been living with this gentleman for less than a year and he flat out said i I didn't care for him i don't i don't i don't like him Uh, i had a bad vibe about him right and too many times we hear this it's almost like with the school shootings they say you know he was a troubled kid or these mass shooters it was a Mm -hmm. troubled individual they were always talking about these type of things. So as a community, we, we got to be stronger and band together. Right. And and as parents, you know, like I say, luckily for you, Marlon, uh, you set a precedence, uh, but t- unfortunately too many others are letting their kids mm-hmm. uh, or people they care about just do what they want to do, I think. I got four kids, three of them are adults, 
And like I told all four of my, uh, you know, because my daughter's quick to point out I'm grown. I said, I don't care how grown you are. I'm going to always be your father. Absolutely. You're right. going to always be my little girl. I, so that's just the way it is. I'm like, you may not have to listen to what I have to say anymore, but mm-hmm. you are going to hear what I got to say. And right. that's just the way it is. You know, exactly. uh, you know, um, I'm always going to be in your business. You know, I, t- I tell them, I'm going to be in your business. And I'm like, it's because I love you and I care about you. And that's the only reason why. And I'm like, I don't want you to make the same mistakes that I made. That's why mm-hmm. I say what I say, you know. Right. So so uh, as a parent, Carl, what do you think? What, what What is your guidance to a young lady that, or a, a daughter or somebody that is in a situation that you completely disagree with or you got bad vibes from? Uh, I'm going to be honest with you because, uh, ironically, I personally uh, – have been, you know, had my stepdaughter go through uh, a relationship that I didn't necessarily care about. And when I felt like that relationship had got to a boiling point, I was like, look, he's got to go. You know, I I, I won't put myself on blast like Marlon over here, cause, <laughs> but I, I feel like I feel like him, you know, right. the, the, the interactions between them. I said they stopped today. Mm-hmm. Um, she packed all of his stuff up and mm-hmm. brought it to my house. Okay. And I told him, if you want your stuff, you come and get it from my house. All right. And, and you can come in and see me if you right. got any questions or concerns. And I told her, if I see him at your house again, you and him going to have a problem. Right. Because I'm going to deal with y'all right. in a way that you're not going to be happy with. You're going to see a side of me you're not happy with. <laughs> and too many times, I think, as parents, like you said, right. you know, kids want to tell you they've grown. Mm-hmm. You grown, yeah. but obviously you haven't figured this out because you're dealing with this person, right? Yeah, exactly. uh, who's right. not good for you, <clears throat> right? So let you know as parents, and it ain't even about just being a parent as 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 a cousin, an uncle, or mm-hmm. uh, just a positive role model in somebody's right. life. I'm gonna tell you, you know, what you need to hear, not what you want to hear, right? I think I get myself in trouble a lot with just friends and family mm-hmm. saying exactly what's on my mind. And, right. And we debate back and forth mm-hmm. with those topics. And I don't care, yeah. you know, because I guarantee you with the amount of experience I have, I'm going to be pretty fair with my assessment. But mm-hmm. I'm also be dead on point with how I feel about something because been there, done that. Right. Exactly. Right. So do you think women arming themselves, at least in – some of these situations is it beneficial or is it not beneficial because of in certain situations how you think let's say how they you know do you think they is it they comfortable enough well that's the thing you know a a gun a bullet a a gun or a bullet knife whatever what don't have a name on it so i'm like if that person can get it from you okay you thought it was going to help you now now it's a hindrance so if you're going to keep this stuff you're going to have to be proficient with it you, just like with the police department or the military, you're going to have to constantly train, train, mm-hmm. train. What if I'm in this? More. What right. if I'm in this scenario? What if I'm in that one? You, it's always a whole bunch of what if. You can't just say, okay, I'm gonna get the CPL, mm-hmm. and you got a gun, and then a don't cute know what, one. And, yep, yep right. or, and, and then don't know what to do with it. Right. You know, because like, you know, I saw one lady had a CPL. Mm-hmm. Well, what it was we had to take her and her husband and her mother-in-law to the hospital so she had her gun on her Mm -hmm. so she had you know you got to check it in at the hospital right so they got the little book where you uh put the make model and all that your information in so she's writing stuff down she hands the gun uh to the security officer so he's looking at the gun he's looking at what she wrote down he's like ma'am what what glock do you have so that's that's what i got right there he's like no it's not ma'am you have a bursa 380 right she didn't even know what kind of gun she had Right. You know, and then, you know, she's like, well, it's not loaded. And he's like, ma'am. Mm-hmm. What? So I'm like, I'm like, oh, I'm like, well, who taught her a class? Right. You know, where she got a walking you know, around with an unloaded. You know, gun I was and don't right. Know you know, I was trying. I was going to try to be ear hustle Athena. But I was like, nah, that, that you know, no. <laughs> yeah, but I was like, nah, that, that's unprofessional. So let me just so, shut up. Yeah. But, but my whole point is, mm-hmm. if you're not if you're going to carry, you need to be proficient in whatever you have. So what I think we can recommend, at least if you're going to have a gun, and that's for anybody out there that want to get a weapon and want to protect themselves, go to the range at least once a month, at the bare minimum. You should be in there once a month uh, shooting at least 50 rounds of ammo or more um, to get comfortable and get proficient with using that weapon in both hands, strong hand and your off hand. Yep. 
and you know uh, we also recommend while you're at home you re- you learn how to draw that weapon out um, while it's unloaded so that you know you can get comfortable with handling it and just in case you know you get into a situation and you have to pull it um, so with that um, and we talking <coughs> weapon safety um, I'm gonna want to transition over to this three year old that got sh- that shot themselves the other day. Um, okay. In critical condition. This was in a, a trailer park community. Um, I saw a lot of the neighbors talking about why, you know. They was, call them mobile home parks now. Oh, okay. <laughs> mobile home Talk parks. Talk about mobile park people. Okay. What up, though? All right. Uh, <laughs> you know, why was a weapon in place for a three year old to even get their hands on? Yeah, they got a point. I'm like, uh, you're supposed to keep it. Like I said, you know, I have many firearms, uh, but I keep them unloaded. To your daughter's boyfriend, did you hear that? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I said I have many. I said I always keep one loaded and readily. But for the majority. Just to keep him on on point. (laughs) (laughs) But, yeah, for the most part, you're supposed to have those guns locked up, unloaded, and out of reach. So exactly. th- this shows me this guy had, you know, he was he was unsafe with his weapon. Out, mm. out, like I said, it's probably under the bed or the, the new thing I'm hearing is sticking a loaded gun under the mattress. Okay, you got an inquisitive three-year-old. That's not a safe place. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And know? that's right at their height. Right. right. Exactly. Then on the other thing, you know, I, I'm probably going to get a lot of, ooh. I'm like, if you have kids, because this is what I did with my kids when they were small. I showed them what they were. Uh, I let them hold them unloaded. I explained what this was and what it could do. That way they knew not to touch it because they already knew what it was. They knew this was daddy's. They knew this, that, and other, you know, and they didn't want to mess with them. Mm-hmm. You know, so th- that's one other thing that you can do. But like I said, for the most part, you need to keep them guns away, unlocked, well, yeah, unloaded and unlocked well, and locked up somewhere. Get you, right. There's all kind of cheap gun safes out there. You can get you one for 20 bucks. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You know, so, you know. And you right. brought up a good point, uh, showing those weapons to the kids. You know, mm-hmm. we could always debate at what age do you think mm-hmm. is the right age to get them to the range. But mm-hmm. uh, I also feel that that's something that when you feel the power of it, if, if you know, and that's up to you as the parent, uh, but I would recommend uh, even getting them to the range. Hell, it might be a beneficial in the event of a situation in the home that and they too. need to help you. But mm-hmm. most definitely uh, heightening the awareness because we say this till we blew in the face and yet again we keep on hearing about these situations where these kids are uh getting a hold of these um loaded weapons and i get it you're in a bad community or or you feel like your safety is at jeopardy and you want to be able to access a weapon fast Mm -hmm. uh you don't want to have to worry about trying to load it because we know that realistically you probably won't have that kind of time right but again where's that gun safe at and how do you keep it safe Mm-hmm. So I agree. Uh, we got kids in the house, especially a three-year-old. I don't recommend sending them to a class. Uh, right. So you must, you just need to think about there is no safe place. We all right. seen, you know, funny uh, video on the Internet of a toddler. He wanted a donut, and they were on the stove. And that mm-hmm. little fella figured a way out to get on top, uh, mm-hmm. get up there on the stove. Mm-hmm. and pulled the donuts down, fell off or whatever it was he was standing on, flipped a whole box of donuts over. But you know what he did? Because right. wasn't nobody around to say, oh, baby, he laid there on the floor, grabbed the donut and started eating it Right after he fell off of his prop mm-hmm. to get up there. So, right. you know, don't don't second guess or don't think that a curious three-year-old won't climb on <laughs> top of the refrigerator from the cabinet. We've mm-hmm. seen them do it to get their favorite cereal, so right. don't think they won't do it to go get your weapon. Right. These kids, they, they something else. They mm-hmm. will find a way. Absolutely. Right. I agree. So if anybody is tuning in just now or catching up with us, um, this is Athena Protection Service. We are doing our podcast, um, security company in Detroit. We provide armed and unarmed guard services. Um, we do uh, private investigation, consulting. You can reach us on our 1-800 number at 1-800-951-4866. That's 800-951-4866. Reach us on any social media outlet at Athena Protection Service or on our website at athenaprotections.com. And make sure you hit that like button and uh, YouTube, that subscribe button. We really appreciate it. 
All right. So the next thing I saw on the news, and I'm just going through these stories I saw that's interesting to me. Absolutely. And I think that hit home in a lot of places, and this one particular, particularly in our industry and in the city at, or state at large. Some security guards walked off the job in protest wow. downtown because they want a union. What are your thoughts on that? What are your thoughts on unions? Hey. I'm a proud and associate member of the Detroit Police Officers Association. I'm all for unions, and I'm like, uh, they did what they were supposed to. Because I'm like, I've seen it was, it was the company was Secure America. Mm-hmm. They all over the place downtown, right? And it's my understanding, uh, they do a lot of security for Dan Gilbert, right? That man owns the Cleveland Cavaliers. I think he's the second richest person in Michigan. Mm-hmm. He can afford to pay them people. I'm like, cause let's be real. Who can survive on eleven dollars and fifty cents? You know, and I'm mm-hmm. like, that's what they making. Mm-hmm. These are armed guards. Uh, armed some, guards. S- some, some of them are. Well, I think the armed ones make a little more, but uh, the unarmed ones, yeah, they make around eleven, twelve dollars. Right. Wow. But you know, like I've seen them, they out there riding, they out right. there riding bicycles, riding them um, uh, segways. Mm-hmm. You know, walking around out there, standing around. Then he's got his little armed guards. You know, they out there walking around too. I'm like. Give them their money. I'm like, you can afford it. Stop being cheap. Absolutely. You know, like I said, they were absolutely right, right. to walk out of there because I'm like, I guess you feel you need security. Well, these the people. Pay them. Because mm-hmm. like, I put it like this. You get what you pay for. If you're paying, if you're paying dollar store prices, you're going to get dollar store service. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, you know, if you, if you want some professionals out there, give them some money. But then at the same, on the same token... If they're going to give you that money, you got to realize what your responsibilities are to your client. You know, so I'm like, if they're going to pay you some more, you got to act. You got to act right. Now, I, like I said, that particular company, I've seen, you know, their people look professional, you okay. know, from the ones that I have seen. You know, I haven't seen any sloppy ones. But then there are some companies down there. I'm looking like, my God. I, yeah, you deserve $11, you know, but, you know. But that that particular company, yeah, they were they were right. You know, okay. if I hadn't had to work, I would have supported them. So here's here's what they said. They said they wanted uh, better wages. They had safety concerns and protection via union rights. You okay. know, because you're not in the union, they can fire you when they get ready. Yeah, exactly. So um, they wanted to join the Service Employees International Union, um, and. They stand for, and they got a uh, stand for security campaign where they're trying to raise the industry standards for the security guard industry. I'm all about that. You know, Absolutely. people want to make more money, they make a way where security guards can make more money. I'm all for it. Anybody that work for us, uh, they want to <coughs> get a union going. I'm all for it. You know what I'm saying? If that if that helped them, uh, give them more comfort and be able to do their job better, then I'm all for it. Um, so, on this Tuesday, Fox reached out to Secure America about the workers' ongoing fight for a union, and um, Secure America said that they got competitive wages and a competitive benefit package that is substantial and substantial pay increases, and they the highest paid in Detroit at fifteen dollars an hour. Now. Fifteen dollars is good, but that really is still, you know, in the grand scheme of things, not really what you want if you're trying to make a career or something. Right. And especially if you're putting your life on the line, security guards the first line of defense. That's Absolutely. those are the Absolutely. people that's gonna be there before the police get there in most cases. So I think, you know, there there should be some system in place where they better taken care of so that, you know, they can get what they need and have some form of job security so that, you know, they're not worried about being fired or something like that over anything. But, you know, and, and I hear a lot of people, they complain about unions because they think that people keep the job because they don't deserve a job because of the union, and the union keep, you know, terrible no. workers on the job. But if you are an employer and you do a paper trail like you're supposed to and you document what somebody's doing wrong, then it won't be an issue, in my opinion, right. to get that person out of there. Because I've seen people fired from the police department for not doing what they're supposed to be doing. And the police obviously has a union. I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, I think, uh, uh, unfortunately, our auto industry right now has kind of put a bad taste in people's mouth about the union, but I agree with you in the sense that uh, mm-hmm. a union gives 
gives people that opportunity to have some security and, and have a voice mm-hmm. uh, speaking for them because too many times you can't have an individual do that. Right. And you as that individual feel like you don't have anyone to go to, kind of like the situation yeah. where they felt they need to walk out. Mm-hmm. You don't have somebody uh, speaking on your behalf mm-hmm. and having your best interest. Like you say, yeah, there are some, some – uh, disadvantages to it uh but right. again that's up to the company and that's across the board for them to do their due diligence to make sure that they're crossing all of their t's and dotting their i's when they come to discipline and mm-hmm. and making people feel like hey you know deadbeats aren't sucking up the uh payroll right so it's better to have it and not mm-hmm. need it than to need it and not have it you know like i said you, those people are there for a reason you know on some level, they there to make sure management does what they're supposed to instead of just any and everything. Exactly. So, all right. I hope they get it. Yeah, that's, I, I hope so. You know, we'll see coming up. I believe this is the second time mm-hmm. this year that they walked out. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, uh, I don't know. My, my my nephew works security, and we, I mean, I was talking to him at the table, and he was just saying um, the demand on them is too much you know he's saying they want you to be available 24 hours a day seven days a week they're always working overtime and um they just don't get any rest and then the conditions that they work in a lot of times they outside in the elements and it's just not enough um i guess support from his position he was telling me that they just don't have enough support from the company that they that they felt like they needed so we'll see we'll see Okay. So one of the other things I, I, I saw was, uh, <coughs> and this is one of those things where we got to be careful. Uh, there was a road rage incident uh, from an a angry Rochester man. Oh, wow. Those are always interesting stories. Got out the car and pulled out a knife and knifed the guy's BMW because wow. he swiped his car in traffic. <laughs> now, he knifed his car? Yeah, he, he pulled a knife out and... Uh, he just Payback. started like stabbing the hood. Yeah, or the something? guy, you know, he just took the knife along my man's BMW because he, uh, you know, hit his car. Wow, that's scary. See, all I got to see, see, now what if that guy had pulled out? What if that guy had pulled out a gun yeah. and shot him? See, I'm like, you did road rage. He had a knife out. Ro- yeah. Road rage is a double edged sword. Yeah, you pull out a knife, the other one pull out a gun. Then what? Exactly. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and I'm, you know, I'm like, is it worth it? You know, that's what you got insurance for. Mm-hmm. Or then the other thing, which I just see more, all these a- all these accidents that have people are just, I don't know, it's more careless. I'm like, mm-hmm. everybody's. I'm telling you what they, it they is. T- they it's, tell it's you. It's the distraction. Yeah, it's the, the, distra- the, it's the, the phone. Devices. You know, I'm looking, you know, because right. I'll look over, see somebody driving. They, it's doing, worse than a drunk driver yeah, now. Doing, mm-hmm. doing this. Right. Texting or. On the freeway at that. Exactly. Or I was on my way home. From work a couple of days ago, and I watched uh, the guy. He was uh, over to my right, and he watching TV while he driving. Wow! You know he got. I see the phone. He, you know, he got a little <laughs> suction cup thing, sitting up in the windshield. He watching TV while he driving. I said, "Oh my god!" Mm-hmm. I said, "Let me get way over to get the hell away from him," because mm-hmm. I'm like, "Yeah, we gonna have a problem. This fool hit me." So right. Man, I can't stress that enough for our listeners. You know, again, share this because we have got to do better. Mm-hmm. That text message can wait. Right. <laughs> I mean, that that's kind of the anthem I don't think I've had to say it, but uh, mm-hmm. that movie most definitely mm-hmm. can wait. Or right. that YouTube video or whatever it is that you're doing. Uh, we're getting too comfortable with the devices. Uh, we understand the need or the so-called need of them, but if we can't stress it enough, especially with two uh retire police officers here Mm -hmm. just the safety because again to me it's almost worse than drunk driving i'm gonna say this at this point if if you want to sit and drive i mean if you want to sit and watch tv or do all this stuff then you need to get on these companies and make these driverless cars an option now you know Mm -hmm. i'm like they just testing it they they testing that mess downtown but i'm like make it so it's it's available for everybody if this is what you want to do if you just Mm -hmm. cannot put that phone then you don't need to be driving then it, it has something like this so that way they need to catch an Uber, man. Or okay, yeah, yeah. Right. We, we can't stress that enough. <laughs> uh, we've got to do better. I've, I've even found myself wanting to respond to a message, mm-hmm. you know, 
you know, a single guy, you get that message and you, you need to make sure they know that, hey, I'm on the way or whatever. Mm-hmm. Stop it. You know, if you're but, driving, just we, don't do it. We are some old cats. I'm like, I remember when I had a pager, so I'm like, <laughs> You got to wait till you get to a phone someplace. Yeah, so I'm yeah. like, hey, that's what that is. I'm like, you just going to mm-hmm. have to wait. You know, or like I always say, this phone ain't a leash. Mm-hmm. I'll get to you when I get to you. Absolutely. All right. So the last thing I think I want to cover while we got a little bit of time left. Okay. During the holiday season, we know it's emotions run high around this time. The robberies go up around this time. Yes. Um, you know, violence among family and friends just happened to go up around this time. Thanksgiving. So Thanksgiving With the family. is right around the corner. Um, I'll be at your house for Thanksgiving. We'll, we'll be more than happy to welcome, yeah. welcome <laughs> you there. You live too far. <laughs> <laughs> so really I just want to say for people to be safe and be cautious when you're out there um, shopping uh, make sure you're watching your surroundings and um, what's going on around you um, again stay off your phone while you're out shopping and you're out in public you're at the gas station getting gas don't look at your phone and pay too much attention to your phone because somebody may be out there paying attention to you mm-hmm. and you know that they could be out there to take your car or take you. I mean, you never know. So you just might, uh, it, it would be in your best interest to to kind of keep the phone down and watch the people that's around you during this holiday season to make sure that you stay safe out there. Very much so. Mm-hmm. And I hate to say this as a police officer, but watch out when you go to little small suburban cities where they don't have nothing to do but mess with you. So I'm like, just, mm-hmm. put, just put it down. Just put right. it down. Because um, them you guys. You're talking about in regards to. Driving, driving, and utilizing yeah, your mobile yeah, device, yeah, anything, mm-hmm. anything, traffic. You know, yeah. They, right. they, I hate to say it, yeah. They don't do real police work. All they do is do traffic. So, you know, the the littlest <laughs> thing they gonna get you. So that you know, you just ask, you asking for it when. Mm-hmm. So just be mindful. Okay. And we need it, unfortunately. I mean, right. I know it sounds crazy, and mm-hmm. like like Marlon said, uh, they don't have anything else to do. But if they can stop one person from texting and running into the back of me or right. one of my loved ones. Right. Uh, I love it. Uh, and yeah. uh, just back to touch on the holidays and being safe. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are some things you recommend for people, uh, Marlon, out there uh, when it comes to, like I said, out there shopping? These ladies. We got a lot of money on us yep, and stuff ladies, like that. These ladies, I'm like, you know, when you're driving, put your, uh, put your purse on the floor. Put it on the uh, the back seat or the, or the floor, just don't leave it in that passenger seat because I'm like, that's just an opportunity okay. for somebody mm-hmm. to smash that window and snatch it from you. Uh, when you're in the mall, you know, don't have the thing just flopping around. Keep that thing wrapped around your arm so can't nobody just run up and snatch it from you. Great point. And, you know, like I said, you know, gentlemen, right. gentlemen, I'm like, you know, uh, yeah. y- your wallets, you know, put them in your front pocket. Put everything in your front, you know, because, you know, it ain't nothing for somebody to come up, bump up against you, slap, uh, and go behind you and grab that wallet out your back pocket, then you're looking stupid. Or, mm-hmm. like I said, you know, get you them RFD cards because now these people walking around these scanners. So when you put your credit card out, they're getting your information, you know. Be mindful of what, you know, if anybody's around when you're using the ATM machine so they're not looking at your PIN code and all this other stuff. Because, like, you know, mm-hmm. getting access to that is like getting access to your whole your whole life now. So I'm like, you just got to be mindful around your surroundings. Absolutely. Right. You know. Some great advice. You know, you know, people are not as nice as we like to think. You know. I seen the commercial and I, I thought about it and it's so true. We have more personal information <clears throat> on our mobile device yep. than mm-hmm. we do in our home in our file cabinets mm-hmm. where we're saving uh, those important documents. Right. Well, not they've made it to where you can't live without one of these things. So all your information is in here: your credit cards, your mm-hmm. addresses. You, you, and like yeah. you said, there are devices that can compromise not only those as well as your. Uh, credit cards and debit cards and things of that nature. So just really want to, if we can't be at home enough, being safe this holiday season. And when we talk about uh, Thanksgiving dinner, uh, I know that that's a time of year. I know I look forward to the mm-hmm. eating of the great food. So I hope right. you got some good food, Dan, when I come through on Thanksgiving. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> the anxiety that comes mm-hmm. with dealing with the family uh, mm-hmm. in those situations. Uh, if I could just give you a, it, or any of our listeners a little bit of advice uh, during the holidays is, you know, remember what it's about. Mm-hmm. And when I say that, we, we put too much stock in uh, spending money 
And it's not about mm-hmm. that. It's about spending time with friends, family, and, and you know, your loved ones. Uh, I, I can't stress that enough that we get too caught up in trying to financially please people. Mm-hmm. That'll be a whole nother podcast. Right. Mm-hmm. But uh, keep that stress level down. Uh, and most definitely, we can't hit home enough as a thing of protection services that this time of year is really important that you are being safe out there Mm -hmm. like marlon said ladies put that purse someplace out of sight uh put those phones away when you're trying to enter and leave uh busy locations people out here they're watching right you know the gas station everybody goes to the gas station and that's Mm -hmm. one of the biggest places that you can be taken advantage of between those scanners that people are using at the pump so make Mm -hmm. sure that uh, if you're paying at the pump, you you are familiar with that gas station. Check for those things. Usually you can give a, a tug on the spot where you put your credit card in to make sure that it's not something someone else put on there. Right. Uh, try to frequent stations that you're familiar with. Try to use pumps that are close to uh, the, the station itself mm-hmm. where the chances of someone putting uh, devices on it are limited. But really just being safe this holiday season as Athena Protection Services, we can't stress that enough. All right. Another little piece of advice. If there's a deal online that's too good to be true. Jordan's for $95 yeah. new. No. It's too good to be true. Jordan's don't come from China. Um, and neither do designer purses. So you be mindful of where you're shopping at and these deals that you think you're getting. Um, if, generally, if they're coming from China, they're not real. So, and I know some people enjoy their boosters and they like to shop with those people. Um, I would just recommend to steer clear of those types of things, but especially online because your, your merchandise can get taken um, before it even gets to you. So just be careful. Some good points, most definitely. Well, we uh, talked about a lot of stuff here. Just to kind of recap, uh, mm-hmm. our goal today was to share some light on the unfortunate incident that happened with a uh, one of our Detroit finest, and unfortunately I feel like uh, just as a citizen that we're getting desensitized to this, uh, we have to uh, stick together as a community and, mm-hmm. and continue to, you know, not get caught up in this them against us. You know, we all know that if we were to really look at this as a police department, we talking about high 90s, very high 90s, percentage of officers that have our best interests at heart. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, when we talk about those issues, we're talking about a very small percentage of of the police department. Like I said, support your local police, because like I said, when you call a 911, you calling them to come help you. Absolutely. You know, so. Let's throw this back out there again before we go. Just about the dispatch system in in general, because I think people kind of miss the point. I don't have all the information about the white van that it was snatching girls or whatever, but I saw somebody complaining about the police not them not being able to flag the police officers down. Well, if the police officers are going somewhere, generally you're not going to be able to flag them down and get them to help you and do whatever it is you need to do at that moment. So you would have to call nine one one. And that goes into a dispatch system. And then a dispatcher then prioritizes that run. And then that run is sent out to the next available car. Well, that's the thing. I'm like, okay, again, it's a, being a police is a J-O-B job. Those officers work eight hours. So I'm like, there's only so much you can do in eight hours. Like I said, you know, people come into the precinct, well, I need you to do something, and they get mad when the person at this says, well, I got to call 911 because we cannot dispatch cars from the station. They just can't do it. Everything has to be documented, and it's all about it's – it's a liability thing. Absolutely. You know, mm-hmm. everything has to be documented. And like I said, you have you have two uh, – you have the 911 operator, then you have the police dispatcher. <coughs> the 911 operator gets the information. Mm-hmm. They ask basic questions, then they forward it on to the police dispatch who prioritizes and sends people where. And like I said, you got to understand, like I said, during the eight-hour shift, you might have three or four uh, cars. Okay, they might be tied up, so they can't do your th- do your uh, emergency right then. You just have to wait. There's just nobody to go. So I'm like, people just understand and bear with them. Right. You know, they'll another, get to you when they can. Another reason why we stress being having the ability to, 
um, defend yourself if you're in a situation or if you're out there and you're capable of defending somebody, you see uh, somebody having some harm done to them and you see that situation from the beginning and you're able to help them, help them. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, the police won't be there immediately. So, I mean, even us <coughs> as retired police officers, we have to be prepared to defend ourselves in the event that harm comes our way immediately. We can't dial 911 and get that assistance like we will want to immediately. So it's just just some uh, information to give the people out there to just you have to be ready. You have to be cautious and the police are not going to be there on the spot. There is a gap in between calling 911 and that officer being there to help you. And if your life is on the line, you're going to have to be able to defend yourself until help arrives. And hopefully uh, citizens, instead of recording um, your situation, they jump in and help you Absolutely. and make sure that you don't get hurt. And we provide a lot of those scenarios and, and give a, a training on that in the course that we offer through our CPL class. But um, shameless plug on the company there. But uh, back to just summarizing what we talked about today. We, we you know, unfortunately, again, uh, condolences out to the family of the officer that mm -hmm. was just unfortunately uh, killed in the line of duty. But also, I can't stress enough this, uh, too many times as friends and family, we feel like a difference of an opinion means that we don't like one another and it results in us being angry at one another to the point where we may even feel like we need to have a fight over it. We can have a difference of opinion, folks, and mm -hmm. still care and love for one another. Uh, like Marlon said earlier, I'm going to tell you this, you might not, you might not like it, but uh, you're going to hear it. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, just as we wrap up here, we talk about say something all the time. Mm -hmm. We got to do that amongst ourselves. Even us as black men, you know, too many times we can't have a conversation while somebody feeling like, you know, you disrespected me. Right. I, I, I tell Absolutely. more people here lately that I love you than I've mm -hmm. done and I don't know how long and not because right. uh, of anything other than that's real. But mm -hmm. within that, I'm gonna tell you when your shit don't stink either. And right. we gotta do a better job of that. And for the women listeners out there, uh, you know, if you want to arm yourself and you think that's the thing to do, get the training. We offer it at Athena Protection Services. Get the training. Uh, there's a lot of misconceptions out there as far as how to carry and what you should and shouldn't be doing. We clear a lot of those things up for you. Can't stress that enough. And just want to thank our listeners for uh, listening to us today. One last time, Dan, how can you get in touch with us? All right, you can get in touch with us by calling us at 1-800-951-4866. That's 800-951-4866. You can reach us on any social media at Athena Protection Service, or you can reach us on our website at athenaprotections.com. And as I said, please hit that like button and share, as well as the subscribe button on YouTube. And I just want to thank our guest, Marlon. He's right. always keeping it 100% real. Every time. Uh, we love him to death. I don't care what nobody thinks. I'm uh, being good today. You're, you're welcome. Uh, we got some uh, interesting topics we're going to be talking about on our next podcast. So stay tuned. We got some, uh, hopefully, that'll be interesting to talk about. And we do this uh, once a week. Mm -hmm. And for those of you that are going to be traveling these holiday, uh, this upcoming week, be safe out there. Uh, and for those of you that are just going to be enjoying friends and family, hey, if you're going to be drinking, call an Uber, call a Lyft, take be it safe. easy out there. Be safe and enjoy these holidays. Spend this time with your loved ones. And from Athena Protection Services, we want to just say thank you and have a great holiday season. All right. All right now. <laughs>